The public beta for iPadOS 26 launched today, so here is the roundup of what I think are the best features of this new software. And yes, it is called iPadOS 26 now because Apple announced at WWDC that they are switching the name to match the year the software update is to release. The most notable change with iPadOS 26 is obviously the new liquid glass design, and it is apparent right from the lock screen. And this alone makes it feel like an entirely new device. After using the iPad with this new liquid glass design for some time, I didn't realize how dated almost the previous OS felt. Everything now feels alive and vibrant and rounded and modern, and I personally love it. There's a lot here with the new design too, like the clear icons and changes to the lock screen that you'll notice across the entire OS and of course here on iPad too. Now, perhaps the biggest update we are seeing to iPad is how seriously Apple has taken windowing and window management to iPad. This iPad is definitely more like a sister than a cousin to the Mac with this update. Right from the jump after updating, you will be asked how you want to approach windowing and multitasking on your iPad. And this can be changed later in the settings under multitasking and gestures if you change your mind. You can do full screen apps, which will always open the apps full screen and you can swipe home to switch between them. There's windowed apps, which is new with this update and it allows you to resize and arrange multiple windows in a single space on your screen. There's no set window sizes or placements on your screen like in the past. You can make them any size you want and windows can even be off screen if you want them to be. This experience feels much more like using a computer than before. And Apple didn't completely go away with Stage Manager. And if that's something that you want to switch to, you can. And that's where you arrange your apps in groups and choose different stages while you work or multitask on iPad. One thing I wasn't expecting Apple to ever add to iPad that now having used it, I'm glad they did, are the traffic lights. X to close, minus to minimize, and the arrows to make it full screen. Just like the Mac. If you long press, you get different tiling options to help you with window management too. And speaking of more surprises from Apple, this windowing is not locked into the more expensive iPads, the ones with the more improved chips. It's available to any iPad that supports iPadOS 26. So that means you can use windowing on the base iPad and even the iPad mini. When you have a lot of windows open, you can swipe up from the bottom and see the new expose mode, which shows all of the windows that are open and allows you to quickly switch between them. If you have windows open and need to quickly open another, you can do a quick swipe up and it will part the windows to open a new one. And if you want to close those windows, you can swipe up again to clear them. Pretty cool and easy to get used to as you're working with these updates. The dock on iPad was brought some new changes, first being that you can add folders like you can on Mac OS. I'm always in the Files app on my iPad. I'm a big iCloud user, so I love being able to just quickly jump into the folder I need without having to first navigate to it in the Files app itself. Speaking of the Files app, the Files app got an updated list view, so now there's classical folders and the columns are actually resizable now. Tags now affect the folder color and you can even customize the folder with icon or emojis. This is big for my customization fans and anyone who uses tags for sorting and organizing their files. I personally love this for sorting video footage, so I just love to see this brought to iPad. Something I didn't know I needed until I used it was being able to choose what I want to open a file with. So I can long press on a file, tap open with, and then choose what I want to open that file in. This is great, especially if you're a designer or an editor who has a lot of different apps and wanna open a photo with one editing app over another, for instance. So now your iPad won't guess where you want to open the file. If you always want to open a specific file within a specific app, say you always want it to open with this editing app or whatever that may be, you can now long press and tap get info about the file and then choose the default app it will always open with. Very mindful, very demure, very much like the Mac. There's also now a preview app, which you'll notice working with the files a lot. You can now edit and sign documents right from preview. It has Apple Pencil support, which is nice. Crop, rotate, get info, export, and print. Everything you'd expect to be able to do when you're quickly viewing a file. If you open a photo, you can even remove the background right from preview as well. 
Preview is actually something I use quite a bit on my Mac for preparing digital stickers actually. So I'm excited. It's here on iPad too and I can't wait to experiment more with that and see how it changes my workflow. When it comes to using and working from my iPad, 99% of the time is with the Apple Pencil. I write, I draw, that's just what I do. I often forget about the whole other world of iPad that is typing and using the keyboard and trackpad and keyboard shortcuts. And a lot of that came down to the type of work that I do. It really lends itself really well to using the Apple Pencil, of course, but also I just hated the experience of using the keyboard with my iPad. It really did feel incredibly limiting and the cursor was just terrible and a huge part of that experience. It was just this big circle that made me feel like an iPad kid. Well, now we get a true cursor with the iPad, so now I don't have to feel ridiculous when I use the trackpad on my keyboard and I can actually tell what I'm clicking on and it doesn't feel so immature is the only word I know how to describe it. Interestingly enough, iPadOS 26 is adding a menu bar. You can get to the menu bar by pushing your cursor up to the top if you're using trackpad or a mouse or swiping down from the top with your finger. The menu bar will show the shortcuts for these different actions that developers can tap into for their own apps, but there's different functions like pacing attributes, creating a new note, print, you know, all the actions that are relevant for the app that you're in. Much like the Mac here, of course, I'm not sure how much I'll personally use as it wasn't something I necessarily needed for the apps I use the most on iPad. So we'll see how that affects my workflow, if at all, but I do like seeing that here on iPad and we'll see how that works out for me. The support for background tasks with iPadOS 26 is one of the things that will help me get so much more work done on my iPad without the need to move to my Mac. With background tasks, you can run tasks, well, in the background. So if I'm moving large video files over, I don't have to keep the files app open on my screen and just wait for it to transfer like before. I can jump into another app to work, write something down or you know whatever I need to do and that task runs in the background as a live activity. I move files a lot, video files between my SSD and the files app. So background tasks was very much needed and I really didn't realize how much I needed it until I started using it. And you won't feel like you're stuck in an app waiting for things to transfer and render while you work on something else in the meantime. Big plus for iPad multitasking and productivity. I'm still an experimental shortcuts user. I have some basic ones I've made and a few that I've spent weeks on trying to get right. And I'm personally still in the process of figuring out how to automate my most repetitive tasks and the work I do in general. So I'm looking forward to changes with the shortcuts in iPadOS 26, especially as a big chat GPT plus user. Apple intelligence features were added as actions in shortcuts. So you can generate images and use the writing tools from Apple intelligence. But I think what most people will be excited about is the use model action, where you can use these language learning models for your shortcut automation. You can select whether you want to use private cloud compute, which goes to Apple's secure private servers, on-device models, which just uses the power of your device and stays on your device. So that's best for things like privacy concerns, or you can tap into things like chat GPT. And then you can just prompt it to do things that you would otherwise with an AI chatbot. I think this will be huge for a lot of users, especially those involved in shortcuts and the shortcut community and creating automations. I personally pull up chat GPT as a separate window all the time and work out my ideas, improve things, proofread, make this better, improve this. So I'm really excited to pull that more into Apple shortcuts and have that run from my phone, my different devices, my voice assistant. So I'm quite excited about those changes for Apple shortcuts. That is something I'm experimenting with a little bit more. So if you're interested in seeing more shortcuts content, do let me know. I do have a few that I'm kind of working through at the moment. But I would love to know if you're excited for those changes to shortcuts, and if so, what you plan on using those new changes for. There are a few new apps coming to iPad with iPadOS 26, like the phone app and games 
And finally, journal. I genuinely really enjoyed using the journal app on my iPhone. I was in my last few weeks of pregnancy around the time of its release. And I just love how it pulls in photos, my workouts, the maps and locations I've been to. It really felt like a scrapbook almost where I didn't have to do very much work at all. It was so much easier to get in the habit of journaling because it was something quick, but still had all of the important information of the day pulled in for me. To me, it would have made sense to bring that over to iPad at the time of its release, but it felt inherently different with being on iPhone since my iPhone is always with me and records that information that I like to see when I go to make a journal entry. But later in the day, if I did actually wanna sit down and write about my day further, I can now with journal being brought to iPad. It does bring Apple Pencil support, which is nice, and I just love to see it. Those were the features and updates that I thought were most worthwhile for iPadOS 26. Of course, there's more smaller quality of life improvements and just a lot to dig into, honestly, with this update. Let me know what your favorite is. I'd love to know what you're most excited about when it comes to the changes for iPad this year. If you love this video, you'll love my interview with Craig Federici. I had the opportunity to sit down with him and ask him all of the questions about iPadOS 26. So I will see you over there.